is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is Season 5, Episode 49 of The Chris Abraham Show, and I do not know what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, let's see. I'm walking to Ideto's, where I will eat a veggie omelet and rye bread, which is outside of my diet parameters, but I didn't have any breakfast, I didn't have any food to make breakfast, so if I get to choose what I want for breakfast, that's it. Generally today I take off, but I need to spend some time doing some work for someone that I kind of put off for a while. And I owe it to them, to her, and uh, I need to reach out, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place, if you can, reach out and touch somebody's hand. I'll make this world a better place. If you can, I'll reach out and touch somebody's hand. I'll make this world a better place if you can. <laughs> anyway, so I need to reach out uh, and do search for SEO gigs and Upwork because I don't want to fall for the getting behind on that and not having the next thing set up. Uh, I noticed that... Uh, I've closed out some campaigns and some gigs and so forth, and I need to spend the day kind of sending out uh, pitches. Pitches get stitches. Um, and like that, what else? Um, I don't know. Like, I want to come clean. A lot of my extremist views are just for entertainment purposes only. Right? Like, I don't have any skin in any games at all, really. I mean, I don't even care about gun laws, right? Like, my life would be completely different, not at all, if I, uh, if I sold my firearms, uh, if I lived in a gun-unfriendly state. I wouldn't have guns. Uh, I don't conceal care anymore. That was fun, but it was... I feel like it was experimental. I feel like everything I do is experimental. I did not put the 30-pound, uh, 20-pound, or 10-pound weight back into my bag. Um, but I do have my suspension trainer in my bag and I do have every intent of going to the park and doing that if it's not ruined by uh, thunderstorms and it's extremely overcast today so it very well might be um, canceled for rain canceled for weather but um, I did bring my umbrella I didn't bring my uh, Dutch Army Poncho, which is sad. And uh, what else? Oh, yeah, not having any skin in the game. Um, I'm also surrounded by trans people. I mean, there are trans people. I've known trans and non-binary people since growing up. And uh, some people want to pass... Some people do pass, some people don't pass. Some people almost seem like they're wearing uh, their other gender parents' clothing. Um, some people are um, signify almost totally as a boy, but have long hair with barrettes in it, pretty colored barrettes, and no change in voice or tone. Like, this is perfectly natural, and in the everyday engagement of life, when do you ever use pronouns? Like, 
99.99% of the world never says, never uses anyone's pronouns or names or whatever. You say, hello, good morning, how are you? I am fine. I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you are doing well. And they have yet to create an alternate pronoun based on you. All y'all is gender neutral. Uh, you guys uh, tends to go across okay. But all y'all and y'all complete... Who would have thought that the most gender neutral um, uh, way of referring to a group of people who are all different types of genders is a southern colloquial reference, right? Y'all and all y'all is like the most completely safe way of referring to people whose gender you don't know. I know that women are perfectly cool with, with saying, hey guys, how are you doing? Um, but they wouldn't be with like, hey dudes, like that might be... But you know, in a world where gender is just is just something... It's just a cultural trope. Uh, then I don't know. I'll, I'll just stick with all y'all. Uh, but that might, of course, trigger people because they might think that I'm a, I'm a personal lynch mob, which I'm not. Um, like I've mentioned several times, I think, I have... Um, I don't know. I like to say that I have situational awareness. I like to say that my head's in a swivel. And that might be true. But while I probably am not um, autistic spectrum, I definitely am not neurotypical because I've got this thing called aphantasia. And aphantasia is the inability to see anything in a mind's eye. Um... I've been to a, a million uh, meditation sessions, including guided meditations I used to do with my mom. And they're always saying things like visualize a red apple or visualize a candle or whatever. And I am unable to do that. I've never been able to do that. I've tried so hard sometimes and thought maybe I could. I also am self-diagnosed. Both of these are self-diagnoses self-diagnosed with something called SDAM, which means my narrative memory, my both visual memory and my uh, actual memory of my life on Earth is kind of boiled down to bullet points, like literally bullet points and pretty granular bullet points too, like not a fine grain, like um, if you think about a beach, it's sort of more like those beaches that you see in uh, the south of Spain that are mostly um, smooth rocks, and they call them beaches. They're not, uh, they're certainly not the uh, fine cake sugar, uh, that uh, powdered sugar uh, that one might find in a hyperfantasia person, a hyperfant or someone who has extremely good memory. But it's more like um, all the big rocks and none of the small rocks. Like, um, you know, I don't even know. Like, I, I don't even know necessarily. Uh, like, I remember surely the, the big loves of my life, but I've, I don't even remember any of the little loves of my life uh, very well at all. And it might be because I keep on re reinforcing myself. Uh, my uh, ex-girlfriend, Michelle, used to call and say, hey, it's your ex-wife. And so um, I consider the big loves to be sort of like ex-wives. And so I know who those are. But like the little loves? Um, no, I mean... It's uh, very spotty. 
very difficult to convey, I think. Um, but as a result, I don't know, like it's really hard for me to become uh, activated or radicalized or whatever, because uh, not that people and things don't mean that much to me, but like I, I keep on, I keep on remembering uh, the serenity prayer, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, um, living day by day, right? So it's so easy, like 99.99% of things going wrong in the world cannot be affected by me. And any strong energy that I put into it could make it worse because unintended consequences are real consequences. So, for example, my attempt at mitigating climate change is uh, living in a, an efficiency apartment in a, in a dense uh, apartment building, uh, not owning a car, not owning a motorcycle, uh, owning a bicycle I've had since 2011, um, taking Uber only when I need it, taking buses when I need it, uh, not eating packaged food, not buying bottled water, not buying uh, entire CRVs full of La Croix or entire CRVs full of um, little water bottlets. I buy extremely expensive things that I expect to own forever. I just bought with the help of, uh, of I think it's the subreddit, it's like buy it for life or own it forever or forever something. I just bought a extremely good Yeti insulated um, thermos -y thing that has a really great locking mechanism. And I made stovetop uh, cafe, uh, what is it called? Bustello. I made amazing coffee top, cafe Bustello coffee. And I put it in there. And I have uh, a mini Nalgene full of Relight hydration salts. So I don't need to rely too heavily on those little single packets and I have a uh a Nalgene single wall uh stainless steel uh bottle that uh most people only use if they're really going camping and they want to use the bottle like to throw into the fire and to heat water and stuff but I just use it for Vasa and uh got my bags got my satchels, got my, oh, I even carry my own fork and knife. And whenever I get any napkins, I stuff them into my bag so that I can just keep them. And if I have a stash of, of napkins in my bag, then I will not obsessively grab them uh, from the store. I do not drink with uh, straws ever, uh, not even a Starbucks or whatever. Um, and now that I'm approaching Ididos, I insist that they serve my water and my coffee and my espresso in, uh, glass or ceramic, glass cups or ceramic mugs. So I try to reduce their waste and, um, like that, I, when I buy things like, uh, like my Garmin watch, I'll wear it for 10 years. I'm really tempted by the new uh, Garmin Instinct uh, 3, is it? I don't know. It's the super big one with the light. I really want that. Or I want the Garmin um, uh, Enduro. Is that right? Ultra Enduro. But this is, works perfectly fine for what I use it for. Um, I use my Fitbit 
until it breaks and then I upgrade to one. This one I bought earlier because I realized that it had an EKG function, EKECG function. So I don't know. I, uh, I'm sure based on the fact that I'm huge, I probably eat like a family of four. So that is kind of wasteful. And I am carnivore, which means I contribute to the slaughter of baby seals. Actually, you know, I don't know. I contribute to the death of poor little cows and uh, chickens and etc. So anyway. All right, I guess I'll finish the episode. This is the end of season five, episode 49. I am now sitting in Ididos and um, I am out of things to say and coffee is more important to me than the Chris Abraham show at the moment. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Chris Abraham show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.